I had a bit of trouble coming up with a, a title for my talk, which kind of fits because one of the points I wanted to make is that scientists can be pretty bad at giving out a clear message. Um, we talk a lot in terms of likelihoods and probabilities, and if we're talking about things that might make you sick, we say things like, oh, you know, it's got a higher risk factor. And um, people will ask you, well, does it make me sick or not? Like, what's the answer? And you kind of go, oh, you know, it's kind of a maybe. And um, on the other side of things, it's easy enough to find a quack who will very boldly and very plainly say something completely wrong, but with utter confidence. And so um, this is a bit of a problem because we kind of are losing a bit uh, the war on this. And even in cases where it's really, really clear scientifically, like the link between smoking and cancer, it's a 20 times higher risk, which if you say that as a scientist, it's extraordinary. It's really, really high risk. But then people might go, aha, it's only a risk. Maybe I won't get cancer. And they smoke anyway. And so, you know, we need to simplify the message. And it has been done with smoking, and we have these nice simple messages. But we need to do this a bit more. And um, and especially in the face of the quacks who are very good at delivering the message. And actually, this has been um, described by two um, kind of psychologists, I think, called Dunning and Kruger, who said that it's this cognitive bias in which unskilled people make poor decisions and reach erroneous conclusions, but their incompetence um, means they can't actually recognize they've made a mistake. And so this is a very complicated way of saying um, that these people are too stupid to know how wrong they are. Um, <laughs> but uh, but we, we, have to, we have to try and be clear and straightforward in our message and but also be right at the same time. Yeats also talked about this or at least you could um, a, could say it applies as well in one of his poems when he said the best lack all conviction and the worst are full of passionate intensity. So you could accuse scientists I think relative it's, they seem to be kind of dithering in their approach to things. They'll say things and they're not quite said strongly enough. I'm an evolutionary biologist and if I had a penny for every time somebody said to me, oh, if evolution is true, how come there are apes still exist? I would have about 10 pence by now. But um, this is still something, it's an argument that's thrown out there all the time. There's another guy who says, the banana has been perfectly shaped to get into your hand if you hold, it, your, if you hold your fist like this and it's got a top that opens a bit like a drinks can, therefore God exists and evolution is false. So these silly messages go out there, but it's a bit less amusing when it comes to things that impact more on our life, like global warming. And this is a really bad story because not only is the science completely backwards for the people who are criticizing it, they are actually making really serious claims of fraud against the scientists. They're, they're persecuting scientists and attacking them quite directly. And they have absolutely no problem in making very bold, and um, sometimes political, I don't know why the science would go with politics, statements. So in order to try and remedy this, I shall start right now and um, tackling um, evolution and creationism first. I can tell you that creationism is a load of bollocks and um, this is this is absolutely true um, evolution is a fact and we have plenty and plenty of evidence for this and anyone who tells you otherwise is either too stupid to know how wrong they are or they've got an agenda and the same thing applies for intelligent design which is just um, creationism by another name um, for political expediency to try and get it into schools when uh, creationism was decided to be too religious um, so uh, I'll pause here no uh, Homeopathy is bullshit, and I mean that uh, metaphorically, but if you're upset by that and you're a homeopathist, I can, say, I can say it's actually literal, because if you consider the dilution of the bullshit in all the water, this all water is, of course, a very strong bullshit tincture. So, um, uh, the so in terms of global warming, the overall preponderance of evidence, okay, this is me getting back into my bad habits again, because I'm not an expert on global warming, but I do trust the experts, so I'm not going to say it this way. I am going to say out plainly that it, global warming is uh, um, man-made and it's a fact, plain and simple. We don't need to mess around with having complicated statements. And while I'm here, I'll uh, just dispose of a few other ones. I don't have any more bad words, sorry. There are a few children in the, world, <laughs> in the room. Um, so the MMR vaccine does not cause autism. The original work um, that was linked to them was shown to be fraudulent. The doctor was disbarred. The paper was retracted. It has been extensively studied. It's not that we haven't studied it. It has been studied. There's no link. Um, smoking does cause cancer. You probably know a guy who smoked all his life and didn't get cancer. And you might even know another guy who never smoked and he did get cancer. That doesn't matter. It's complicated. That's okay. Smoking causes cancer. <laughs> and and um, the, the last thing I wanted to say is um, avoid radium. Apparently it kills you. <laughs>